Hey everyone, today I've got a different type of project for you. I have this air conditioning condenser that's raised up on this wood platform and these deck boards are completely shot and I need to replace them. The interesting part about it is I don't want to remove this condenser. So we're going to replace these deck boards with this still in place. Should be fun to see. These old deck boards have definitely served their purpose. They're almost 20 years old and it's time to be able to replace them. The challenging part about this whole operation is being able to leave this condenser in place. I don't want to disconnect these lines. I don't want to deal with having to recharge the system. So I have to be able to do this without disturbing the lines and without moving this condenser. But all of these boards, as you can see, are in horrible shape and need to be replaced. Some of these boards I can just lift up and get out of the way. I don't know if this one's loose. This one's loose too. And that one There we go. That's the first three. That's another one loose. That one's solid. That one's solid. Some of the nails actually hold pretty well. This one I had to release from the other side. Some of these nails just come out real easy and the heads are already exposed where I can just slip this bar underneath and be able to pull it up and then some head, nail heads just break off. But you can tell that the nails are completely rusted and pretty much shot. You have to be real careful when you're disassembling a project like this because you really don't want to get cut or hurt in any way with these old rusted nails. Here's the next problem. This 2x6 is completely rotten also and needs to be replaced. This is part of the challenge that I was hoping to avoid, but this definitely adds a new level to this whole operation. I'm going to remove the rest of the nails from these deck boards to get that part of the project out of the way and then deal with this 2x6 and hopefully this compressor doesn't drop on the ground. I have completed removing all of the nails from each side of these deck boards. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that the center of these deck boards were not nailed in, but I have a feeling they were because this platform obviously was built prior to the installation of this compressor and I'm pretty sure they're going to be nailed. Well at least I can get one more board out before I have to start dealing with the complicated portion of how to get the ones underneath the compressor out from under it without dropping it on the ground. Here is the new material that I want to use to replace those deck boards. Now this is the five quarter material that I'm going to use for the deck boards itself and I also have one two by six that I'm going to make a uh, joist on there so it'll help support it. And in case you're wondering, as far as my tie downs, yes, I do take my own advice and use the same method to tie down my material as I show you in the videos. This is a very solid way to be able to transport the material with this type of tie down. And I encourage you to take a look at the video where I show you how to do this. I'll just slide my stop down to the 48 inches, I'll lock that in place. And now I'm ready to be able to cut all of the deck boards. All of the deck boards are 48 inches. Now I do have to cut around the post in a couple of the places, but that's no big deal. I still need the 48 inches long to be able to have all of these deck boards cut. Now off camera, I did go through this whole platform and reinforce the other 2x6 members of the uh, platform. 
because over time those have weakened as well and I wanted to make sure that everything was as tight as I could possibly get it hopefully so that it'll last another 20 years. Using the miter saw with the stop block on the uh, workbench is really the easiest way to be able to cut these uh, boards and have them all 48 inches long. Normally if I wasn't near the shop, if I was out on the job site, of course I'd use a circular saw and would have to measure and cut these if I didn't bring a miter saw out to the job site. But because this is in my home, this makes it really easy just to be able to set this up and get all of these cut. Before I can remove those last remaining deck boards and this center joist, I need to be able to put in two new joists to be able to make sure that this thing doesn't fall on the ground. I'm going to put these two feet on center. That way it will give support to each side of this compressor and it's going to allow me to be able to cut out this center board and the rest of those deck boards. Now if the center section is not nailed this is going to become a pretty easy project. But if those deck boards are nailed to this center joist that's definitely going to complicate things. But at any rate I have my joist marked out for the two foot on center and it's time to put those in. Now I have these joist hangers that I'm going to use. That way I'll be able to put these on the back side and then just drop the 2 by 6 in here and then I can put the front one in. So these hangers will really make it a lot easier. Okay, the joist hanger is in place and it's ready to be able to receive the 2 by 6 joist. That sits in there. Then on this side, I just used a clamp to raise it up to get it flush with the top. While the clamp's holding it in place and flush with the top, I'm going to take and add two screws to the front before adding this joist hanger. That's going to give me the extra support that I need and will allow me to be able to remove this clamp and free up the space that I need to add that joist hanger. Everything that I do at this point is to ensure that this compressor does not drop on the ground. I want to be able to put this uh, joist in place on each side to be able to give that support because I'm getting ready to cut out the center joist and cut out the rest of these deck boards. The two screws will hold this joist in place, but it's not going to hold it long term. By adding this joist hanger, that is going to make a much more secure joint and something that will last for years to come. Now you have two screws that I'm going to put on each side. And you also have screws that go in through the joist itself to be able to support it. So actually, all total, you've got eight screws that's holding this. Now granted, I'm using an exterior screw for this. Typically, there's some special nails that you use to be able to hold the joist hanger. But I don't need to do that in this application. The first four screws are in. Now it's time to put these screws in at an angle that it goes through the joist itself to be able to secure it. And remember, there's two of these screws on each side. Once all of these screws are in, of course, I have to repeat this same process on the other end of this joist. But once this is completed, this joist will be much, much stronger than the old joist that was just held in by the two screws on each, each side. This is much stronger and hopefully will last a lot longer. The way this works, I can literally have this one joist hanger on the back side. I'll lift up the joist, set it into that slot just like that, and then raise up the other end and put it into place on the line that I have marked on the rim joist. And that actually works out really, really well. And it makes it where I can do this with one person. By lifting this joist up into place, then I can use the hammer and just tap it over and get it exactly where it needs to be. Remember, I marked the center line on this rim joist so I know exactly where it needs to be. And this way, one person can do this easily without a lot of difficulty. Once I have this tapped over and right on my center line that I have marked on the rim joist, I can then just grab the joist hanger, slip it on, and screw it in place. Most of the projects that I do, I have to do by myself. 
which means you have to be a little bit creative sometime because it would definitely help to have more than one person, but I don't have that luxury. I just have myself. So you've got to be able to be a little bit creative to figure out ways that you can actually accomplish the job by yourself. At this point, I've installed two new joists. I've installed the joist hangers to be able to support it and give the added strength. And these two joists will actually support and hold the compressor much better than that single one did for the last 20 years. And now I'm actually ready to be able to cut apart the remaining deck boards and get rid of this center joist so I can start putting in the brand new ones. The first thing I want to do though is go ahead and replace this 2x6 on the side. Now here I ran into a little bit of a surprise. The back 2x6 was not supported in that 2 before at all. And you can see right here how it dropped down a little bit. Well needless to say I grabbed some clamps real quick and secured that so it would not allow this compressor to fall on the ground. I also worked very quickly to be able to get this old 2x6 off and put the new one on before this would drop any further. I notice you can't see the clamp, but the clamp is on the back side against a 4x4 post holding that 2x6 in place. That way with this new 2x6 that I'm installing, I can put this on real fast. The good thing is I had pre-cut this and it was ready and waiting to go on just as quickly as I could get the old one off and discard it. I had to work quickly on this. I didn't want to take a chance on dropping it. But I also put two screws in the 4x4 post and two screws into the 2x6 on each end. Now it's time for the decking boards. I want to start with this one. And I want to measure to get equal distance of the hangover on each side of this board. That way it'll establish my square reference to be able to follow all the way across the entire deck of this uh, platform. Now one thing I want to point out too, this platform is not square. The back side of this against the uh, brick wall is actually significantly out of square. But quite frankly that's okay. Because if I can have the front portion square to the platform then it's going to be acceptable all the way across and give the appearance that it's actually square even though on the back side it's significantly different. The deck boards actually will be able to line up and be able to reference that brick and look like it's square even though the base frame of this platform is not square at all on the back. Of course this first board need to be notched around this uh, 4x6 post so I took the measurements that I needed to and I'll just take the saw and cut that notch out. Before I attach the deck board, I want to remove this center joist. The easiest way to do that is with the sawzall. I'll just cut this out and hopefully if the deck boards are not nailed to this, then this board will just drop down. Well, now that it's cut all the way through, wishful thinking, the deck boards are nailed to this joist. So now it's time just to remove this section. I can get rid of the nails, but there's no turning loose. That is actually holding on pretty tight. So it's time for plan B. Since all of these deck boards are still nailed on to this joist, I'm going to have to take drastic action. And to do that, I am going to take the Sawzall and cut all of these deck boards now. I'm going to cut the joist on the back side. I'm going to cut these deck boards on each side. Now remember it can't fall at this point because the new joists are going to hold it in place. But this will free up these deck boards and that joist that's nailed together. It's actually one big component and I've got to be able to break it apart piece by piece. And at the same time I've got to take care of the compressor and I've got to take care of these lines that are running to the compressor. Can't take a chance I'm damaging them at all. Okay, the camera died and I missed some of the video, but here's the gist of it. You can see two new deck boards on the back side of the compressor. And what I'm doing is just sliding these boards forward and taking these boards off one at a time. Safety is very important. When these boards come off, you have these big old long nails that are sticking up there. 
and you can step on these very easily or hurt your hand on it. So make sure that these nails get bent over and then from there I'm going to cut out the next section of this choice. And with that section cut out, then I'll do the same thing. I'll slide the boards down, I'll put in a brand new deck board on the back side, and repeat the process. So at this point, I can slide this component of these three deck boards that are left. I'll grab a brand new board, start to slide it in, get to the other side, pull it out, and then I can continue sliding the new deck board into place. So it's a pretty simple process, but it has to go in order so that you can still support this compressor. I must say I did get a little bit of support to be able to get this one in. This deck board was a little bit tricky and it just didn't want to co cooperate. But with a little bit of help, we were able to get it in place. At this point, the old deck board is exposed and I'm going to repeat the process. Remove the deck board, cut the joist, and repeat this process until these remaining three are out. And at this point, I can start putting in new deck boards. Now I had already cut that first one. It was ready to go on. So I screwed it in place and I'm working on the second one now. Of course, on this one, I had to make a notch as well to finish going around that four by six post, but it's all finished and it's ready to screw in. Of course, I'm screwing the screws into each of the ends. I'm not putting screws in the center. Really don't need it. The two screws that I put on each end of this board is going to hold it in place and I'm not going to need to have screws and that's the two new joists that I put in. But as these get put into place then I can just simply slide down the next one and continue this process. At this point it becomes very easy and there's no danger of this compressor falling to the ground. As I slide each of these new deck boards in place, I'm simply screwing them down and moving to the next. It becomes very repetitious at this point. It's also very reassuring to know that this compressor cannot fall on the ground now because I have the new deck boards on each end of it and they're getting secured pretty fast. So there's no chance of this compressor falling on the ground now and that makes it so much easier to be able to relax a little bit as I finish this project. Now again, working alone means I have to move from one end to the next and back again to get these boards in place. So that's a little bit time consuming, but overall it's not bad. So after a few more minutes of moving back and forth and screwing these different deck boards down to the um, platform, I can safely say that it's done, the project is completed, and I absolutely love how it turned out. And I'm actually, quite frankly, relieved. So I hope you enjoyed this short video today. And if you did, you know, give me the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And I look forward to seeing each and every one of you in the next video. So for now, bye-bye everyone.